be questions from Sakir Starmer today in the Commons about energy security uh, and the cost of living. And as uh, these sanctions uh, come into effect, how might that affect people at home? Just to give you a bit of a taste on it, the, the Resolution Foundation, which is a think tank... Which Turn this down. This is live in the House of Commons. Um, the last time the whole of the House of Commons stood up in support for Ukraine, I think they were wearing Ukrainian badges. Um, what I want to do is I want to tackle it from a different angle because I haven't tackled um, the hooks in the jaws part and all that yet, which I'm going to do in another video. I mean, there's videos out there anyway, man. You know, parcels out there anyway. But um, what I want to talk about right quick is um, all wars are bankers' wars. And I want to go into the fact of um, this karagma and the fact that, you know, what you got to understand, man, is that when this war kicks off, that's going to be Esau. There's going to be nothing else after that. So the, the mark of the beast has to be globally implemented before, you know, them nukes are flying, man. Like before the World War Three. The World War Three is end game. And you have to understand, it's it's order of chaos. It's order all everything that's going on is order of chaos as well. Um, now there's a scripture. There's two scriptures in my head that just slipped my mind, man. Damn. But let me get this. Let me get um this wall. All right. Let's go to Revelations, right? Okay, I'm gonna go back to that clip. Okay, you got Revelation 8, 13, but I'm going to read Revelation 19 and 12. One woe is past, and behold, there come two more woes hereafter. Right? So you had World War One, and you had you didn't have two more wars. And John the Revelator was seeing this, by the way. So he was seeing things that were going to happen in the future. You know, he, the Lord was just... And we understand them, them now. Because the, these two world wars are, oh, come on, man, that is major history. And, it, you know, when, it, when was that? What, 1939 40, to 1945? That wasn't that long ago. You know, they still do remembrances for it. It says, the second war is past, and behold, the third war cometh quickly. Now, I'm going to go into some scriptures here to show you. Well, let me read this one. This is Revelations 12 and 12. It says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Now we know woe means destruction. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. And the major woe, the, the last major woe, is that nuclear fire, which means that after that, there's going to be that, that's that's it. And it tells you that in many scriptures, man, you know what I'm saying? There ain't going to be Edomites rolling around, you know, doing nothing. They're going to get too busy getting zapped up by Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. The buildings, the infrastructure. Now, that was the scripture I was thinking about. The scripture says, since Satan fall as fast as lightning. Let's look at that. I'm going to go back to this. It's in Luke. Luke 10 and 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. You know, that's how quick this man's going to go out during what? During this... Uh, a third world war okay so you want to talk about this war man when this war really when this when this war when this when you're going to know when it's when it's world war 3 okay cuz that cuz the chip will be already presented already been there already be chaos going on the earth the lord said that when it comes to the earth man fire will be kindled the earth's going to be in a state of fucking complete chaos man Starving people, 
Um, and we we still got Ezra's where it talks about, um, 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 you know, people rising up against governments, factions. You know, you know. Let's play some of this. popular with many of their own MPs and it's meant that people are having to go through a lot of paperwork and jump through a lot of hoops to get a visa to enter the UK and the government under pressure to change that system and just to give you the context of the difference between Ireland's approach and the UK the population of the UK is 13 times larger than Ireland but so far we've offered home to about a third as many refugees okay the PM's up let's listen Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you. Never before has this House listened to an address like the one given yesterday. See, if you notice, they're wearing um, Ukrainian colours. So they're showing, showing you at this time and stage who they're backing. Okay. <clears throat> President Zelensky. And so I want to tell the House that working with our friends and allies across the free world, we will be doing even more in the coming days to protect the people of Ukraine. And Mr Speaker, my right honourable friend, the Defence Secretary will be setting out more details for the House later on. Mr Speaker, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others. In addition to my duties in this House, I shall have further such meetings later today. Polly Latham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My son Ben died from an aortic dissection at age 44, leaving a wife and two young children, a condition which kills 2,000 people every year, needlessly, more than die on the roads. Most people do not know anything about this condition until it devastates their family like mine. That's just kind of going off topic here. But now when you read Revelations 13, right, it talks about the bear. Let's get that. You know, when, like I said, when this war, when this war is really popping off, um, you know, because what you got, these nations, you know, you know, UK and everyone, oh, you, you know, Russia have got, they've got a great army and they've got allies. So this, this third world war ain't going to be no joke, man. There ain't going to be no, yeah, they're going to bomb and then they're going to, then, and then the, you know, then people are going to be walking around trying to chip. No, man, if, first of all, America is going to be totally wiped out. A lot of these countries are going to be like fucking, we're talking about nuclear war here. Okay. Matter of fact, Esau wants everybody chipped before the nuclear war so we can, he knows where people are. Because that's why he's trying to get everything gridded. He wants everything gridded so that you know, you don't have to, like, let's say, let's say you had World War Three, and then you're trying to chip people, man. You ain't going to know people are going to be all over the place. He's trying to, he's trying to, he, he's trying to chip everybody right now in his cities. He's trying to, that's why, you know, he's got a problem with, um, off the gridders, you know, um, you know, and stuff like that, that, that you know, they, they make him out to be crazy you know, and stuff like that. And then, you know, you get different things with, you know, PSYOPs and MK Ultras with off the grid is doing crazy things because they're trying to demonize that because they want everybody gridded. Now the people that don't accept this NWO, they want them dead. Okay, so you, you gotta understand that. By the way, they got, um, Bonkers. This is Revelation 13 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Okay. And the beast which I saw, and this is, that's Esau's, you know, the, the, all his kingdoms, man. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Okay. Al, uh, Al, you got Alexander the Greek and it says and his feet were as the feet of a bear now their feet represent the end of, of it man and um, just like when you read the statue in Daniels you read about the Lord 
being, I think it was like a giant stone and destroying the toes. As a matter of fact, let's get that. Because once this war, once you have a shy comes and in the midst of this third world war, that's it. You got to remember that, man. Um, what am I looking for? Daniels. Now that bear is Russia because Russia, are, um, that's what, that's Russia right there. Um, let's get Daniels. I think it's two. Let's see where we want it from. I want the point. Okay, there's a couple of parts. Daniel's two and forty-one. And when and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of part is clay and part of iron, and the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it the strength of iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with ivory clay, iron mixed with miry clay, because you got these you got strong economic countries and debt countries. You got NATO and you got the EU, and they got a pact together to fight. I think that's the NATO one. And then you got the EU and um, Britain pulled out of that, which pissed off, you know, um, pissed them off. But you know, it's how they're getting involved with the NATO. They're getting involved with the war. You know, even though they've pulled out of the, the EU. So these countries like work hand in hand. And it's funny because and when you read Revelations, it talks about I think they received their power one hour with the beast. Um, so all this is coming together, man. All this is coming, all these prophecies are coming together. It says as the toe and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so shall the kingdom be partly strong and partly broken. And that's you know you got the the, the, the EU's had its own problems going on for for these years. You know, you, economic problems, man. If you've been watching the news over these years, man. Greece, the poor as hell. Spain, that's another country that's like that. You know, a lot of un unemployment. So a lot of people over in Spain, they they be chilling. You know, they got certain called, um, I don't know if they call it a siesta. But at a certain time of the day, everybody just chills out. They just stop working. And um, they, they, they got a high unemployment rate over there. So, you know, these are like issues that have been affecting, you know, um, NATO and the EU. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And it's crazy, man, because um, like I said, the Britain left the left the uh, EU but they're kind of still getting involved they show well where they're showing their support for um yeah Ukraine which is seen more as a west as a western country you know what I'm saying and you know um you know, to go even deeper into it, it's gonna get the, it's gonna, it's gonna be more chaos than this. Okay, it says, and in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and cons and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever, for as much as thou sawest that the storm was cut out of the mountain. Without hands, and that it break in piece in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great power power Yahushua and Yahushai have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation the rough short. So, the feet, the toes represent that's the end. That's the you, you got them ten, you know. Tolls and that and that, that proves that it represents the end of something because it represents the end. If you look at the statues in Daniel, the Lord smashed all all the, he smashed all the kingdoms, 
because they ain't coming back. None of these other nations are going to come back into power. They're all talking about this, they're all talking about that, but none of these nations are actually going to come back into power, man. So they can say what they want. But the scripture says the kingdom shall not be left to other people. So, you know, no Chinese, none of these nations, they're not they're not getting back up in there. You know, you got the Chinese that believe, yeah, okay, we're going to take over or, you know, whoever wins, this is going to be the new. No, 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 no. Oh, and, and that's a whole another. That's a whole lesson. We can merge it with this lesson. Let's see. So many of these cases are preventable by identifying those at risk and early and accurate diagnosis. Would the Prime Minister commend the work of the Aortic Dissection Charitable Trust in working with all aspects of the patient pathway about this condition? And in particular, will he commit to public funding for research into the diagnosis of aortic dissection and into genetic screening for it. Prime Minister. May I say to my honourable friend first uh, how very sorry I am, as I'm sure the whole house is, for the loss of her son, Ben. And she's a passionate advocate so for this work this and I think health. A forced £200 loan for every household paid back in mandatory instalments over five years. The big gamble behind that policy was that energy costs would drop quickly after a short spike. That bet now looks certain to fail. When will the Prime Minister force the Chancellor into a U-turn? Yeah. Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, the, uh, my role from the Chancellor has set out plans to help families with energy costs, with unprecedented measures to abate, uh, abate council tax by, uh, by £150, Mr Speaker, in addition uh, to all the other schemes uh, that we are putting forward. And I, I can tell the House you that... Know what, what you notice when you watch these dudes is they've all got, like, um, scripts. So they've got, like, certain questions... And then, um, then you know, he's got, like, the written answers to the questions, you know? Uh, yes, he's absolutely right uh, that we need to meet uh, the long-term impacts of the spike in, uh, in energy prices, and that's why I will be setting out an energy independence plan. Uh, by for the way, the mouth, when you go back to Revelations um, 13, is, is England, because, um, you know... It, America, you know, the, the power really, you know, comes from England, man. It says, in the feet was as the feet of a bear and his mouth is as the mouth of a lion. And that's why they're sitting there in these seats, do you know, talking about the global stage. You know, they've got gold on the table. You know, and they're talking about global world events. Now, at one point, Jake used to be all up in here, which is a whole other topic. Matter of fact, let me get that, and I want to go back to... Um, let's see what we got here. Okay, I'm not going to read it. I'm going to stick to the point. Sometimes when you see scriptures, you just want to read them anyway. <laughs> but I'm going to stick to it. Let me get Job. And I would like I was talking. Let me, so let me, I was talking about how Yahweh shy. This is Job nine twenty four. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the of the judges are rough. If not, where and who is he? So now, when you watch, now I wish I could type it in, but you know. You know, these phones, man. I need a phone just for, you know, these phones. They just they got all your fucking information on the shit, man. So, I want to just be, I like having things up there. But there's a movie, and it's um basically uh, The Madness of King George. Now, when you watch that movie, you see them wearing the white woolly wigs. Basically, big afros. Now, that's what they was rocking in the court because what they did was before um they set up 
uh, they, they never used to have these two voting parties. That's when Esau started getting in there, man, through Oliver Cromwell and the rent, you know, the Renaissance period and everything, everything changing, going back to that Roman system. They started having political, it used to be a succession of kings. Then they changed it. You had p political parties and one of them was called, what, the Whigs? So why, 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 you had Edomites wearing wigs, man. Then you had another party. And on Jake, obviously, would have been in there still at that time. Puppet Jakes and Edomite finances getting involved. You know, you, you know that's Esau got up in there, intermarried, intermarried, you know, pushed Jake out, you know. Let's go. For this country, Mr. Speaker, in the course uh, of the next few days, uh, to ensure that we undo some of the damage of previous decisions taken, and uh, not least by the Labour government, to invest in uh, not to in, not to not to invest in nuclear, uh, Mr. Speaker, and so and so that we so that we prepare so that we prepare our people uh, for the long term and uh, with sustainable, cost-efficient energy supply. Mr Speaker, I don't think the Prime Minister understands the mess he's in. Working families are facing a £700 spike in April. They won't even receive their £200 loan from the Chancellor until October. The wholesale price of oil and gas is now ballooning. So, by October, when the loan finally comes in, household bills are set to shoot up by another £1,000. It's a total mess. So there goes, there goes them beginning the sorrows again and all that that we was talking about, man. This now, now, this is what we're saying, man. You know, they, they got something called what the dark winter. This is what we're saying. They're telling you right here, man, things are going to get fucking worse. I just did a video on it and then now, now this is live House of Commons. And they're telling you that all of these energy prices, gas bills, everything is going is going to be shooting up. So they said, okay, well, we're going to give these. Uh, everyone's going to be able to get a loan. But when you well loan, you, I mean, <laughs> come on, man. And um, you know, this is where we're heading. You know, this dark winter, man. Let's play some more. Ask again. When is the Prime Minister going to force the Chancellor to U-turn? Yeah. Prime Minister! Mr Speaker, if he's asking for the Chancellor to U-turn on the support that we're giving uh, to families and, and households, uh, I, I, think that he, I think that he's... Uh, I think that he's absolutely out of his mind. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are going to... We are going to continue uh, to give people support throughout this difficult period, as we did throughout the coronavirus epidemic, Mr. Speaker, uh, with unprecedented levels of, of support. We have a £200 discount on bills, £150 a non repayable uh, reduction in uh, council tax, and £144 million extra to help councils support vulnerable families uh, with their energy bills. Uh, uh, altogether, Mr. Speaker, there is a £20 billion package of financial help help that we are giving the British people and we will continue to do more. I think a U-turn, Mr Speaker, is the last thing we want. Yeah. Mr Speaker, we'll see how long that position lasts. Uh, let me try and... Let me try and help the Prime Minister. Let me try and help the Prime Minister by coming at it from a different angle. Before Russia invaded Ukraine, North Sea oil and gas companies were making bumper profits. BP made £9.5 billion. Shell made £14 billion. In their own words, more money than they know what to do with. Since then, the international price of oil and gas has skyrocketed, and so will their profits. When will the Prime Minister admit he's got this badly wrong, put a windfall tax on those super profits, and use the money to cut household energy bills? Mr Speaker, the, the, the net result of that would simply be to see the oil companies uh, put their prices up yet higher, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, what we are, what we are uh, and, and, and Mr Speaker, uh, and Mr Speaker, make it more difficult for them to do what we need them to do, and which I think, by the way, Mr Speaker, they are doing very responsibly at the moment, and that is divesting from dependence on Russian oil and gas. And, and that is the, 
that is the way forward for this country. It is to take, it is to take a sober, responsible approach, uh, end our dependence on, on, on hydrocarbons altogether, and particularly Russian hydrocarbons. And we are taking steps to rectify some of the mistakes made by the Labour government and have a long-term, sustainable, independent energy supply policy. That's what this country needs. Protect. So it says the UK will phase out imports of Russian oil and oil products by the end of this year. Um, so we're talking about this energy crisis here. And what we're talking about also is how, and I'm going to do some more research into it. Like I said, I've got this video to watch. Um, but um, I haven't got around to watching it yet. But um, so going back to this point here, we go to Revelations. When the Lord comes for destruction right that's it so this karag has to come before now what i want to do you know what i'm gonna do let's actually let's let's read second Ezra 15 this is second Ezra 15 and one uh it says um Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of the of the words of the prophecy of let me read that again. Speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and will cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee, for all the faithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith the Lord power, I will bring upon the world the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So you got a lot of things to look, be looking forward to, man. Even famines and these energy crises and the food shortages and all of that is all going to be taking place, man. And by the way, another thing, they want to they want to force people to accept this NWO. They want to force people to get this thing, to get the, um, the Karagma, the MOTB, you know, by desperation and by deception, you know, this is, you know, this is you know, you're saving the planet through um, Greenpeace. I'm sure I'm not going to do another video on that. It says, for wickedness have exceedingly, exceedingly polluted the whole earth and the hurtful works are fulfilled. All right, let's, let's go on. Now, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down. Right. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. One people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. Now check this part, because this part's this part's talking about people rising up against government. For there shall be sedition amongst men, invade and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Now this scripture here is talking about when you, you, you're going to have uprisings against the government and people are going to be uprising against the government for many reasons. As we see, you had the outbreak, you had, you, had, you know, these, these prices, you know, people are going to want solutions and, and they're going to offer people this, um, however they're going to do it, they're going to offer people this karagma, man. You know, um, I can put up a video right now of the, a uh, bank, you know, the Rothschild elite talking about we need a global currency. How the hell they going? You think they're gonna do that before world, uh, after World War Three? I'm gonna prove that they ain't anyway. But they, now they need to re, they need to destroy everything internally. Okay. Because remember, they're gonna be hiding in their bunkers. So when they come out of their bunkers, they want everyone chipped, so they can just. You know, they, they you know they got everything under control, but the the, the thing is, is they're not gonna have. That's why it says in the fullness of their f sufficiency when they're about to fill their belly, when they're about to say, "See, we've done it. We just, that was a smart plan." Actually, the third war is gonna be the end of them. It says, "A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able." Right. Make sure something. Yeah. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. 
A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. So you're going to have all out chaos happening before um, this World War Three. Before, like the before, you know, the nuclear proliferation of the planet, you're going to have chaos going on. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread. And for great tribulation, what he says, because of the lack of bread. And for great tribulation, man. All right. Uh, let me get another scripture here. Funny mentions the barbers people because I wanted to do a show on that. Cause you know, poor I was I'm actually gonna do a video on that, man. Luke twelve and forty-nine. I am come to send fire on the earth. What will I if it be already kindled and it will be? So there's gonna be all kind of chaos on the earth. Now when the Lord comes back. He's going to actually take out and cast out Satan in that third world war, like we said. Like we, like we can prove. And like we've, I've already really proved it. Um, but let's carry on here. Let's, let's carry on. Now, before I do that, I want to get some more of this. Energy profits, not working people. Doesn't that say it all? Britain can't afford another crisis like this. We need to improve our long-term energy security. That starts, that starts with supporting new nuclear and renewables. But the Conservatives have effectively banned new onshore wind. As a direct result of this short-sighted approach, we're using more gas every year than we import from Russia. That's ludicrous. So will the Prime Minister relax planning laws end the block on onshore wind and stop supporting yeah. policies that make us so dependent on foreign gas. Yeah. Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, it's thanks, to the, it's thanks to the policies that this government has pursued uh, that we actually only are dependent on uh, Russian gas for 3% of our gas needs, unlike, unlike virtually every other European country, Mr. Speaker. It's thanks to the massive investment that we've had in renewables, Mr. Speaker, uh, that we are, the, the, as I've said many times in this House, the Saudi Arabia of wind power, producer of more offshore wind uh, than virtually any other country in the world, Mr. Speaker. And I'm, I, I think he just, by the way, I think he just committed to supporting, this may be news to some of his party, but he just committed to supporting more nuclear power. Great news. See, you know, when you check out this... Um... See what you do there is more joy in heaven. See when you check out when you check out these politics, man, and and you know a lot of these um these people in this in this in these houses, they're all friends. You know they're in parties together. 